Welcome to the Cincinnati USA Regional Chambers Business Briefing. This series is an extension of the Chambers Leadership Programs to help you and your business navigate the COVID-19 crisis. I'm Amy Thompson, Senior Director of Leadership Programs, and I thank you for joining us today. We invite you to share with us how we can help you and your business weather this storm. Please reach out to us through our business resource helpline for information or for resources, and make sure you are signed up for our daily uh, email communication through cincinnatichamber.com. Today's business briefing is business continuity plans, principles and practices for sustainability. This conversation will help business leaders create real-time continuity plans. You've joined this briefing in listen-only mode with your microphones muted. Questions for our expert can be submitted in writing through the Zoom's Q&A window. We'll cover as many questions as we can with our one hour time frame. If you've joined by phone or need to so sign off earlier than 1 p.m., you can view the full webinar at your convenience on Facebook. We are fortunate to have John Trunk with us here today. Mr. Trunk leads the consulting practice for Brixie and Meyer, one of the region's largest public accounting and business advisory firms. His organization leads strategic operational and business systems initiatives. He's working with local companies to navigate the challenges associated with COVID-19. John, thank you for being here. Thank you. So John, I would say it uh, for many of us, uh, when we think about the right time to do our planning and create our continuity plans, generally it's not during a crisis. That's right. However, I would say that this entire situation has caught many companies just completely off guard. And, and for our session today, hopefully you can reassure the companies that already have sol solid business continuity plans that they're on the right path but we're really hoping that you can help shed some light for people that aren't as prepared. What should they be thinking about and what should they be doing? So let's start by sharing and understanding a little bit about Brixie and Meyer and what all are you doing to help people through this time? Sure, so uh, thank you very much, Amy, for, uh, for having me and I'm um, you know, excited to share some ideas and thoughts and observations about what's, what's taking place in the, in, in the market right now. It's unprecedented. Uh, so a little bit about Brixie and Meyer and a little bit about myself. Um, Brixie and Meyer was founded in 2002. We have uh, a regional focus uh, in Cincinnati, Dayton, and, and Columbus. Um, something like this, it, it kind of hits our, our core values pretty hard. Um, so our, our mission is to have a positive impact on the people of our firm and the clients that we serve. So uh, we, are, we are active in the community. We treat our clients' businesses as if they were our own. Mm -hmm. So this, this kind of hits home for us on a lot of different levels. So. Um, something that makes us a little bit unique is, is we get excited about project work. We certainly have kind of the annuity tax audit and assurance services, but um, we feel like we add a lot of value when we become a, a trusted advisor. And, and again, I think that's part of our value proposition and why we feel strongly about our ability to help now. So I've been with Brixie and Meyer for about three years. Uh, I lead our consulting practice, as you mentioned. Um, and uh, before that, spent 10 years in Cincinnati at an asset management firm called Fort Washington Investment Advisors as the director of operations reporting and data. So it's a little bit about us and a little bit about my background, but um, to, your, to, to your question about how we're, how we're helping organizations right now, um, boy, it was a, a wild turn of events. A lot of our work tends to be you know, discretionary, strategic, forward-thinking project work and, um, you know, in kind of the, uh, the blink of an eye, that all changed to response planning and, and sustainability. And so, um, you know, we've, we've shifted gears accordingly. But um, some of the things that we're doing directly are uh, with those projects, we're contingency planning, we're trying to identify how we can continue to, continue to move things forward. Um, while keeping kind of the, the lights on in the business. So on a project basis, we're doing a lot of contingency planning. Specific to COVID-19, we are helping clients, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but with the, um, the application process and the eligibility requirements for, uh, for the SBA loans, for the, the CARES Act and the, the, the Paycheck Protection Program. So we're kind of providing guidance on those initiatives, um, 
and helping companies with the application uh, process. So those are kind of higher level things. Um, certainly on the human resources front, we have a human resources practice and we'll, we'll talk about some of these things, but um, you know, how, to, how to work through some of those um, uh, employee challenges during times like this, scale down is something that's, that's just a reality right now. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but we are providing guidance on the HR front. Um, and at a more detailed level, what I will talk through and you and I will go into more details about this is really with response planning. So taking a look at the current state of an organization um, you know, and its overall operating model and its financial picture. And we are building very customized, tailored response plans for those organizations. So um, we'll, we'll go into details on that. But, uh, but important to note too, in that, um, with, with that specific point, we're helping clients do that. But we, we also have a sister company uh, called Brixie and Meyer Capital that owns portfolio companies and so in that regard, we're, we're practicing what we preach and we are uh, putting these measures in place within the portfolio companies that we, uh, that we own as a firm. Wonderful. Thank you for jumping into that. I believe there are top of mind for most leaders right now is cash flow. And what are we doing to figure out how we get cash flow in the door? And as, as we look at trying to navigate CARES or uh, an SBA loan, it's quite overwhelming to try to figure that out. So to know that you all are there to help companies navigate and really maximize those opportunities is fantastic. So thank you for that. So even companies with really great plans that were fully prepared, um, I bet they're still experiencing some hardships right now. So what, what are you seeing? What, what are you seeing right now? Right. And that, that one, uh, that hits close to home for me personally uh, in, my, in my previous um, life at Fort Washington, which I talked about. Uh, one of my responsibilities was, was managing, um, building and managing our business continuity plan. So, uh, you know, a lot of time and, and thought and effort went into you know, structuring how do we maintain our operations? How do we work from home? Thinking through some scenarios, and it was a uh, it was a laborious task for sure. And we tested it once a year. Um, but I I know even thinking back, closing my eyes and thinking about what was in that plan, in no way would it uh, would it have covered kind of the breadth and the the details and things that we're having to deal with today that um, simply just could not be planned for. You couldn't be planned to take people's temperatures when they walk in the door and, uh, you know, and some of these other um, just kind of unthinkable measures. So, um, you know, a, a couple of the high level things that we are absolutely seeing in the marketplace, clearly there's been a drastic shift um, to, to working remotely. Um, and so leaning on technology pretty heavily to do that, doing things like this, you know, uh, right. webinars, which I can talk a lot about the benefits of that. Um, but we're, 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 we're clearly seeing a quick response to, uh, to work from home when appropriate. Um, you know, implementing all of the social, social distancing measures. I talked about taking your temperature, uh, all of those kind of mandated requirements to be able to continue operating. We're seeing companies uh, scramble to get the materials to be able to do that and, and implement those plans. So. Um, that's a lot of kind of the uh, reacting to news and guidance of the day. So we're seeing those things. Um, absolutely seeing supply chain disruptions. So, um, you know, basic supplies, uh, crib supplies that, you know, used to be readily available, could get them in a day, no problem. You know, we're, I know one of my clients, um, we work with their supply chain and their buyer group and uh, forget about direct material for the product right now. Get all the hand sanitizer you can get your hands on. Yeah. Um, those are kind of the, the reactions um, and responses that companies are having to, having to put in place for sure right now. Um, I know we'll talk a little bit more about labor, but certainly we're seeing that. We're seeing uh, layoffs. We're seeing uh, reductions in overtime. We're seeing furloughs. Um, you know, all of those things are, uh, it's just, it's just kind of the reality right now. So um, every company is different, but those are the main things that we're kind of seeing across the board. Yeah, great. Thank you for sharing that. And I would assume every business is dealing with multiple challenges. And I do, as we mentioned earlier, we hear over and over from our members that the number one thing right now is cash is king. That's the mantra we keep hearing. How do we increase? How do we maintain? How do we, we really restore our cash flow? Um, just share a little insight around that with us, if you will. 
Sure. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, and, and one of the things that I would lead off with is that um, with that specific point in mind, uh, not, now is the time to get so uh, intimately involved and knowledgeable of, uh, of, cash, of cash flow within your organization, uh, of the income statement, and um, boy, the, the value in having good financial analysis uh, is so critical right now. Um, it, it's it's impossible to predict, you know, the duration of this or all of the the impacts of it. But uh, as we're thinking about kind of a methodology and how we're looking at these organizations, um, we want to be able to build and kind of model out different scenarios uh, with an absolute focus on on cash flow. So we want to maintain cash flow neutrality. And uh, to do that, what are, the, what are the triggers and what are the responses that we need to put in place to be able to meet that, uh, that overall objective? That is absolutely how we're, uh, how we're approaching these initiatives. So, um, and I talked about practicing what, we're, what, we, what we preach. We're doing this for, for clients, but we're also doing this for the, for the companies that we own uh, as an organization. So um, if, if, if you'd like to, I can talk through some of the specific, uh, really kind of our methodology uh, as we're approaching this, and uh, it's certainly customized, and, and every organization is different, but but we think it's a good uh, a good way to think about this cash flow problem, and it's a good way to um, you know hopefully make decisions based on on fact and based on data uh, because the news is changing every day. But if we can kind of put a a model in place and a structure in place for how to how to go through these. Um, sometimes brutal decision-making processes, uh, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve. So, so John, I understand that you have a, a good solid four-step process to help companies really think through this. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I'd like to remind the audience right now is that there is also the question and answer feature. So if at any point you would like to submit a question, I will be happy to jump in and make sure that we're answering that as real time as possible. But John, if you wouldn't mind, uh, and Michelle, if you wouldn't mind helping us with slides, why don't we jump in on that four-step process to take folks through sure. uh, those resources? Yeah, there we go. So uh, step one in this is, um, and, and this is, I would say as a backdrop, this is kind of business continuity plan or, or not. You know, this is an important exercise um, to build these, mm -hmm. um, you know, well-documented and, and thought out and, and uh, decisions that are based on data and based on some logic. So um, we'll, we'll assume that a lot of those true operational uh, business continuity plans are, are kind of in place. So this is just looking at the cash flow problem uh, specifically and, uh, and, and assuming that some of those operational, if people are working from home and um, you know, you've taken all these other measures from a, um, you know, from a health and safety perspective. So just kind of know that that's our backdrop here. So first and, and uh, you know, importantly is really to get your arms around uh, the data within the organization. So this is obviously all the, all the financials um, operational KPIs. Uh, now, now is the time to understand personnel at a very, very detailed level. You know, the other things that we we want to make sure we have a good grasp on is, um, you know, customer customer forecast. Uh, you want to understand kind of your supply chain and any factors that may need to be considered from a from a supply chain perspective. Obviously, detailed um, understanding of of, uh, of cogs of direct labor, direct material. We want to make sure that we understand um, all of that data and all of those um, all those costs at a very detailed level. And um, you know, we talked about personnel and employees. This is also looking at uh, at, at shifts. It's looking at um, key personnel, mission critical operations, mission critical individuals. Uh, but it's really kind of bringing all of that together. Um, so that you have kind of one clear picture of the, the current state, really, of the organization. And some of these forecast things are important to think through um, uh, as it relates to the impacts of these changes and, and the response plans. So it's really step one, getting your arms around the data of the organization. And as leaders uh, of those organizations, um, it's, uh, it, it may have been a little while before you've gotten involved in you know, line by line expense items, but really now's the time to do that and pull it all together. 
Great. And John, before you go on, I'd love to just jump in on the KPIs. Sure. That's such a critical piece of many of our businesses and, and how we, uh, you know, our, our thermometer, how are we doing along the way? I would also argue that right now, those are shifting and changing for many businesses. So do you have any advice or guidance there as people are thinking about, do we throw out our old KPIs and create a whole new set? What are you recommending? Yeah, I, I think, you know, embedded in a lot of those KPIs should be things that, um, that you would think affect margins. And, you know, margin is another way of, uh, of positively affecting operational cash, operating cash flows. So, uh, so now is probably the time to look at some of those KPIs, you know, like, like throughput, like scrap, like yield. I mean, some of these things that I'm thinking more manufacturing, but, you know, some of these things uh, now might be the time to tighten those up a little bit. It, it's so true that you know a lot of them are going to go out the window because you know your overall capacity may be shifting drastically in kind of ways that could not have been factored in uh, or forecasted. So I, I don't think it now is the time to throw out your KPIs. I think there are probably some to zero in on specific to this process, ones that would uh, would potentially drive some um, some positive impacts on uh, on cash flow. Great, great, thank you. The other thing that I would say is in a lot of organizations, the, the exercise in maintaining those KPIs, uh, it, it can be overhead at the end of the day. So if we're throwing um, you know, manual work or non-value added work on anybody within the organization just to maintain KPIs, it might be the opportunity to put some of those aside for right now and revisit them in the future. So I would focus on KPIs that have you know, a direct impact on margins or that, that can kind of help with this problem specifically. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So once we've brought all of that data together, you know, and we've, we've interviewed kind of key individuals within the organization, um, clearly now is the time to analyze data. We want to uh, scrutinize expenses. We want to look for, you know, we talk about, um, you know, looking for fat, muscle, and bone, and, and hopefully we're a few weeks into this, and I think I, we've seen a lot of organizations have already reacted and the, the discretionary spending has been put on hold and uh, CapEx has been put on hold. Um, so, you know, we've already seen a lot of those measures have already been taking place, but um, certainly there are, ex are expenses and, and there are other potentially discretionary spends that are, that are hiding in there that, um, you know, now is the time to analyze those, assess those, take immediate action right now, kind of forget about, you know, the rest of this methodology and the rest of this process. Uh, important to take action um, right now. We want to understand revenue drivers and, and risks. So as we're analyzing our financials and we're thinking about a forecast, you know, we want to think about um, customer concentration. We want to think about where, uh, you know, we could be really at risk of a, of a really quick 20% reduction in revenue. And, uh, and, and we'll think about what we, what we do about that in the future. But um, we want to understand and have an eye on, uh, on what those key revenue drivers are and where some of the risks may be. Um, we would, are, I'd say, already seen a lot of organizations have, have, uh, have responded. They've analyzed and already responded to these essential and non-essential non operations and, and personnel. I mean, that is where we have seen uh, certainly some layoffs already take place. Um, we've seen some reduction in, in shifts. Um, you know, pulling back on uh, on operations a little bit. We've seen furloughs. So I think um, these things tend to be uh, embedded in traditional business continuity plans. Uh, what are our mission critical operations? Who are our mission critical employees? So that's where we have seen some organizations that, that did have a well thought out business continuity plan already in place have been able to react to these changes. Um, a little bit quicker in this regard, but, but absolutely now is the time to do that as we're analyzing uh, this data. Um, and clearly we talked about kind of this focus on cash flow from, from operations. And, and, and really as part of this analysis, I, I talked about it at the, at the beginning, I think, but it's important to know as you're analyzing this data, what are the triggers, triggering events that will require an organization to you know, pull a lever? So what are the triggers and what are, the, what are the levers that we are going to pull? Come back to that objective of kind of maintaining that cash flow neutrality. But, you know, we want to look at different revenue loss scenarios. So if we were to lose 10% in revenue, 
where could we achieve some cost? Uh, where could we achieve some savings, expense reductions? We want to play out those scenarios to make make sure that kind of things things balance, and we end up kind of in a in a cash neutral position. So, um, you know, those those triggers and and thinking through them and analyzing them through kind of the, the data, um, it it certainly you have to react and you have to respond, uh, but it's based on some some you know well thought out process and it's it's based in fact and it's based in an analysis instead of kind of um you know a snap reaction or something that could ultimately have really negative impacts down the road you know we're we're going to get through this it's going to be very difficult but we want to make sure that when we start to bail water that we do it in a thoughtful way so that we have a, a boat to come back to so all of these things need to be thought through as we are identifying triggers and we are we're pulling levers and we are responding certainly we want to maintain that cash position so that we've we've got uh, we, we've got an organization we've got a company that can that can come back from this so john i'd love to jump in you brought up a couple things that i know are top of mind for many leaders right now and one is the, the concept of forecasting and as people are trying to redo their budget and redo their budget again and again and again uh, they're looking at, okay, do we forecast that we're all back to normal within three months? Do, is it six months? And, and I think that's part of the challenge right now is just this great unknown of as we try to forecast, what type of guidance are you giving people right now as they really try to think about that forecast? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's an extremely difficult problem and it is not, uh, it's not simple. I, don't, I mean, no one has the true answer. So I think instead of saying, you know, plan on two months or plan on three months, it's almost build a plan for a lot of different scenarios. So how would this look if it was two months under this assumption? How would this look if it was four months under this assumption? How would this look if it was nine months under these assumptions? So this is back to kind of the, the role of a financial analyst, I think right now, uh, is not to predict what's going to happen. It's to forecast under a number of different scenarios so that you know, at least we have an idea, you know, we have an idea of what this could look like, you know, if all of this plays out under this scenario. So, you know, I think trying to read the news and, and trying to, um, you know, predict the duration of this is kind of a, an exercise in futility. I think the, the exercise should be more in kind of build for a number of different scenarios and, um, and, and kind of lean on some of that, uh, that, that analysis to inform your decision and thought making process. So we, we didn't bring you on the webinar to have a crystal ball to give us all oh, the man. No, I, I won't, uh, I won't put myself in that position. Um, but we, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's just, it's what makes this unprecedented. And it's what I think makes, uh, even the best business continuity plans, um, certainly a helpful, jumping off point for this exercise but uh but i think getting into the business of predicting is 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 futile and it's more about building a model and building a methodology kind of like what we're talking through and this isn't a, a silver bullet it's just a structure and it's one that we think uh, companies can use to play out a number of different scenarios and that makes a ton of sense and uh, appreciate that that concept the other thing that came up that you were talking about is, unfortunately, a number of companies are truly thinking about the furloughs or thinking yeah. about layoffs. How, how are you guiding them to take advantage of whether it is a loan or the CARES Act or mm -hmm. what type of guidance are you providing for, for them as they're looking at these options? Right. Yeah. So those are, those are clearly um, critically important um, methods, tools, programs that um, that companies should be evaluating and uh, and taking advantage of you know I would say we still think that some of these you know initial cost cutting measures and uh, expense reduction um, actions should be taken you know really before you look on look at taking on debt you know through the SBA loans even though that's a wonderful program and companies absolutely should be looking at at that as part of kind of this this cash flow position and maintaining that uh, that 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 um, uh, neutrality from a cash flow perspective, uh, but those programs are valuable. They're important. They should be taken advantage of. Uh, what we are doing as a firm, and I'll, I'll I'll probably get over my head and and would defer to the uh, you know the folks on the on the tax side, but um, but absolutely we are coaching organizations through 
the, uh, the eligibility process for those programs, um, making sure that they understand uh, some of the, the requirements and we're not really, we're not completely sure yet what, you know, what requirements, what reporting will take place down the road. But right now it's, it's the application process for those programs. Uh, and it's, it's different between the S, uh, SBA loans and the CARES Act, obviously. So, um, so we're kind of explaining the differences between those two, uh, explaining kind of the value that those can bring to the organizations right now to, to achieve some just sustainability right now. Uh, but we're, I would say, back to your question, what are we doing? We're helping with the eligibility requirements. We're helping with the application process. And we are, um, we're, we're, we're coaching uh, our clients through the um, kind of bringing those on board and, and how they fit into their overall structure. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so let's go back a moment then. We've talked about collecting the data, analyzing, and then also looking for those key triggers. Mm -hmm. So talk us through, how do you operationalize this? How do you take all that data and insights? And, and then the what's next? Right. Yeah. So, so first of all, every organization is, uh, is, is absolutely different. And so the levers that, that, that can be pulled within an organization, um, they're, they're very different. So uh, back to operationalizing these and, and putting these plans in place. Um, I'll, I'll go back to that analogy that a member of my team uses, kind of fat, muscle, bone, fat. We're kind of hoping that, uh, that most organizations have, have done that to this point. So we think about, um, we think about projects and, and unfortunately we're a, we're a recipient of this on the consulting side of our practice. Strategic projects, put them on hold, you know, push yeah. off vendors, curb spending, um, um, you know, eliminate consulting, to be honest, you know, in some ways we're, we're uh, if it's for a strategic initiative or something that would add value down the road. Um, boy, it's one of the things that's just a quick editorial. We, we, we have uh, gone from a position of a lot of organizations reinvesting in their operating model, investing in business right. systems and, and, um, you know, it just came to a screeching halt. So, uh, but we're coaching organizations on that. They should not be spending money on, on those things right now. So, um, so kind of cutting, cutting the fat has been, been really important. Um, back to, and kind of getting into muscle and, and bone, certainly we have to look at personnel. Um, luckily there are, you know, unemployment benefits that organizations or that employees are taking advantage of. Um, but, you know, if we are to, to maintain an organization that, that survives this, some of those measures will have to be taken. So as we're analyzing this and we're building an action plan and a response plan, um, personnel is, is often, um, you know, one of, the, one of the levers that we are going to have to pull. Um, so that's a, that's a reality. Um, we talked about kind of these, uh, the, the loans and the CARES Act, those are absolutely things that should be included in these action plans and in these response plans. Um, and as we're building out this method and we're, we're identifying what those, uh, what those levers are that we're going to pull, that bottom point about measuring and reevaluating, this is changing all the time. So this is back to being really close to your books right now mm -hmm. and understanding even on a day-by-day -day basis, um, what is the health of the organization? Have we seen a revenue hit? Um, are we in a, uh, an unfavorable position from an uh, accounts receivable perspective? Uh, you know, what can we do with our, with our vendors in terms of um, deferring, you know, deferring payments, deferred leases, deferred rent. I mean, all of these things are important factors uh, that I would say go into, into putting this plan in place and, and taking action. So uh, sure. every organization is different, but those are a couple of things that I would say they, they tend to always bubble up. They tend to be good levers to pull from a, from a cash flow perspective. And those are great examples. As a matter of fact, we have those type of conversations internally as well. When we think about, are, are there things we can put on hold for the moment? For instance, we have a lot of telephones that are sitting unused back at the office right now, or are there other things? Are there other examples along those lines that may be helpful for people to think about? Yeah, an another one would be, um, and some of these tend to be deferred costs, but this is about getting through this, uh, this, this crisis. Uh, but we think about, you know, maybe deferred maintenance, you know, some things that, whether it's machinery or equipment, that you, you have maybe a preventative maintenance schedule, deferring some of those expenses, kind of pushing them off. Um, utilities, as we've kind of moved to a more of a remote location, we would, you know, maybe tend to see some savings on the utilities side. 
Um, you know, those are, I would say some other, just a couple, couple things I talked about rent deferrals and lease deferrals. Um, yeah. And a lot of the cap acts, again, it's, it's just kind of the reality that companies, a lot of our companies and clients that we work with, you know, they have, they had CapEx planned in their budget this year. And some of them, you know, were just kind of in the first quarter, a lot of those things were starting to get traction and starting to take off. But, um, you know, you can kind of forget about uh, some of those things and, and it's about keeping the, keeping the lights on right now. Great. I, I've got a couple questions, John, that are coming yep. in for you that I'd love to run by you right now. Sure. Uh, thank you to our one participant who reached out and said, we're a sm very small essential manufacturing, 12 employees for both the shop and the office. When we went through the 0809 financial crash, we had to reduce income and personnel. Some personnel had such a heavy burden due to the loss of employees that they became exhausted and stressful. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of long time near retirement employees that are, are really key employees. Mm -hmm. well, how can we better handle the increase in load without exhausting the already limited staff is one piece. And with the new compliance and ever-changing regulations in place, this only adds a lot more to the already lean staff. And, and I bet this is not the only company dealing with this. And, and any guidance or advice there? Oh, man, that's a hard one. So, um, yeah, I talk about 08 and 09. I was at a financial institution in, in 2008 and 2009 and in a leadership position. And I, I, I kind of thought at the time, boy, I, this is a brutal thing to go through in my career. And, and we're clearly going through something that's, that's more difficult right now. So um, that's a difficult problem to solve. Small organization, key man risk. Um, so I would say one of the I'll, I'll bring up a couple points. One of the things that we do plan for and we want to build into our scenarios and, and kind of the response plan is, is key person risk. So I'm, I'm, I'll put the kind of the, the human resources piece of that to the side right now. I'll come back to it. But uh, as we are understanding for the overall health of our organization, how do we get through this? Identifying those key individuals uh, identify the implications, not just if they had to be, um, you know, what if they got sick? What if they were quarantined? Kind of what is the, how does that flush through? So, uh, so I think back to, you know, those, those uh, first couple points about analyzing uh, the health of the organization, identifying key employees and the, the risks associated with them, you know, potentially going, going down or being removed is an important thing to factor in. So know what the impact is uh, for those individuals, but um, it's a really, really difficult uh, problem, and I, I, I don't have a perfect answer for it. Um, I, I think that, you know, I'll talk a little bit about leadership, um, some of the things that we've seen uh, within organizations, uh, how they've responded and responded favorably. You know, everybody is going through this. We're talking about this from a, a business perspective and a professional perspective, but everyone is dealing with this on a very personal level, too. Right. Right. And I think acknowledging that as leaders of these organizations is is so important. You know, this is a it's a it's a human response, and there's uh, there needs to be empathy at all levels for those situations. So I'd say be empathetic first and foremost, and and understand that uh, we're talking about how this affects our businesses. But you know, I wasn't planning on being a part time teacher, <laughs> which I am right now. You know, for the kids that are at home. So right. Be, right. Yeah, be empathetic, I, I would say, first and foremost. Uh, I think, uh, obviously, the focus on health and safety is important right now. Um, I think we, 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 we have to get through it. And sometimes when it comes to those key employees, we need to lean on them heavier. So, uh, you know, I would think it's hard back to this cash flow problem to, to, to identify how to reward those individuals. But, um, but I think you have to take care of those key individuals. And, um, back to the other side of this, when we get through it, we will get through it. Uh, we wanna make sure that those people are still there. And if they're so critical to the business, we need to, we need to take care of them now so that we, uh, we still have that boat to come back to. So there's okay. just not a great answer. I know I kind of tiptoed around that, but it's, it, it's a really difficult problem. I think it's, it's back to being a, a, a good leader within the organization, being empathetic um, and, and, and also having some confidence, you know, confident leadership. We will get through this. Right. This is going to be difficult. Um, we will, we will, we will take care of you as best we can. Um, but, uh, but, but now's now's the time to be a be a leader. 
great. As a matter of fact, we're having several questions come in and um, one of the participants who I know is on, Tilly, good to see you out there. I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna share one of the examples that you're doing. And it, uh, Tilly had mentioned that many of her workforce are not necessarily online. So she will record a video of herself with an uplifting message or some sort of communication and text it out to her team. I just think that's such a great creative way to be face, you know, have a face with a message. Uh, I also know of other leaders who are sending gift cards and doing virtual lunches with each other. Um, so I think it is important to what are those cultural touches and, and ways to stay connected is just so critical. That's a, that's a great point. I'll, um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad uh, Tilly, I think was the name, brought that up. One of the things that we're, we're doing, you know, kind of practicing what we preach, um, we're using technology to maintain that connectedness. Sure. And so we're doing remote lunches, exactly like you talked about. We're doing remote happy hours, you know, with our team. We're kind of getting together, you know, pour your drink of choice and, and get together. And uh, I, I think something, just an observation that I've seen, you know, within our organization and, and, and even within our community is, uh, you know, we've seen a, a real response and, and, uh, and connectedness about this. Yeah. Uh, so in some ways, I'm feeling more connected to, to my team, more connected to my, my neighbors and our overall community. Um, and a little bit of this is kind of kudos to, to you at the chamber and, and up in Dayton with the chamber, the chamber that, we, um, that we're involved in up there. I think the sense of community and togetherness and we're, we're all in this together. Yes. Um, those are just points to reinforce. And, uh, you know, we, we have to maintain this connectedness and, and, and fortunately, technology has enabled us to, to do that more effectively. Absolutely. So let me keep going down this road of, unfortunately, people are in positions that they do have to make some very tough decisions. Mm -hmm. do you, or does your team have recommendations? Are, are you recommending furloughs instead of eliminating positions? Are you recommending salary reductions? When you think about all the different options on the table, is your team recommending one over the other? Uh, we're, we're, we're recommending all of them uh, under different scenarios. So in, in some cases, um, salary reductions are appropriate. You know, if I'm thinking about, you know, leadership positions and if we're kind of an extended period of, uh, of a revenue reduction uh, scenario, I think salary reductions are, are appropriate. So we are recommending those at times. Um, furloughs in terms of retaining people again if we want something to come back to and we don't want to lose those key people so when we get through this they're still they're still around furlough is an, an appropriate response there you know I'd say the caution is that there are um, you just have to be careful with furloughs there are a lot of requirements and, and so it, it's just a it's, a it's a touchy thing but it is appropriate at times um, and, and layoffs are just a reality so you know if we're thinking about a manufacturing facility and, and capacity or not capacity, but demand is um, is is cut in half. There's there's kind of no way around layoffs or cutting shifts. Um, shifts would be a better a better approach if someone was operating at max max capacity. Okay. Eliminating a shift is is appropriate, but you know layoffs at times are are you know the right answer. So I would say we're recommending all of the above, depending on the scenario. Every organization is unique and different. You know, we, 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 we don't want to be cutting into workforce. So this is back to looking at the fat of the organization first. Where are these discretionary uh, spends taking place? Let's get rid of those first. You know, let's just hit employees when we have to. Um, but, uh, but I'd say all of the above are appropriate depending on the scenario. On the scenario. Mm -hmm. And let's keep going down that road. And this is on the, a bit on the flip side. Let's say you have an essential business that is just running hard and strong right now. And they have a lot of folks who are on that uh, essential front line. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in terms of trends around either increasing their hourly rates or providing bonuses right now? Give us a little insight there as to what you're seeing. Yeah, there are essential businesses that are, you know, their 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 demand has skyrocketed at the end of the day, and so you know, for them to keep up from a capacity perspective, this is back to kind of the key employees or essential workers. Um, you know, some of it is more hours, and so overtime, you know, is is a reality for for those hourly workers. So we're seeing increased overtime. Um, we are. Um, I would say this is back to, to rewards. Hopefully, if, if demand is through the roof, the health of the organization is good, 
Um, so overtime's appropriate, you know, spot bonuses would be appropriate. So uh, back to gift cards, that's a, that's a good idea, kind of a way to, to humanize and, and show the appreciation. Um, but I, I'd still come back to some of those main leadership things. You know, we want to, uh, we want to recognize and reward those behaviors, whether it's financial or not. But, um, but, you know, we just want to make sure that we're taking care of those people we're recognizing those that are going above and beyond. And so spot bonuses over time is obviously gonna, gonna help people out. Um, and just that overall recognition, I would say, are things that we're, we're seeing. Great, thank you for sharing that. And, and this next question, I can answer a little bit and then you can certainly jump in. We've had some firsthand experience. We had a transition with, uh, the next question is really around the mission critical employees. What advice do you have if you lose a mission critical? So for instance, what about uh, your CFO? Uh, how would you manage cash flow? And I'll just share a personal experience. We had a transition with our CFO prior to the COVID-19 crisis, and that's where we turned to Brixie and Meyer and have been working with you all and having a great experience um, mm -hmm. having Scott as an, our interim CFO, and that has been a great solution yeah. So beyond, of course, everybody running out and hiring Brixie and Meyer, do you have, uh, which of course they all should, do you have some other great suggestions for what do you do with those mission critical employees? Yeah. Um, so, you know, losing mission critical employees, uh, you know, I would say don't cut one loose or, or don't, don't, uh, don't put that um, action in place and, until you have uh, a backup plan. So certainly there are professional services, you know, not just Brixie and Meyer, but you know, there are individuals in the marketplace that um, we're, 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 we kind of are a gig economy in some ways. So I would say you can get creative with things like, uh, like CFO, like, uh, you know, accounting type positions that, um, you know, are needed to keep the lights on and, and um, you know, collect payment and pay vendors and things like that. So I think, there are uh, there are outsource options for 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 at least some of those mission critical operations, um, but you know we're we're we are looking at high unemployment as a result. So I think it is uh, you know if you are one of these businesses where um, you have mission critical operations, um, you know I think you may have to get creative with with staffing. But there are there are going to be a lot of people in the job market, and so I think you'll. Uh, you, you'll, you may have to get creative and, and maybe change what is a traditional operating model and personnel model to be able to fill some of those mission critical roles. But, uh, but I, I think with some searching, there are outsource providers and there is, you know, there, there, there are a lot of people that are entering the workforce or entering the, the unemployment um, pool for the first time in a while. So there should be a lot of knowledge and resources available. Great. Thank you. We have another question coming in that I, we've heard a couple of times that, um, there's some concern that some companies literally only have, a, they know they've got a couple weeks uh, to survive unless they have some immediate relief. And one of the questions is, it seems like many small businesses will have to take an SBA loan in order to survive, mm -hmm. only to then have to wait for a tax credit, payroll assistance. Right. And, and the question is, do you really agree? Or um, it, it, do you foresee that it'll be kind of that domino effect? Yeah, the, the, I mean, there will be on the SBA side, I think uh, I'd have to go back and look, but I, I know that there is a little bit of a delay in kind of, um, you know, getting those funds from the loan. I think the Paycheck Protection Program, that CARES Act is a much quicker turnaround in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, in terms of cash on hand. So I'd say that that, uh, I, I believe, and I, I, I would still defer to, to the, the experts on my team that are handling that. But, uh, but I think in terms of immediacy and needs of funds, uh, I think that that's that's probably the more appropriate measure, um, but yeah, that that uh, you know can't make payroll within the next two weeks is 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 a problem. It's something that we're seeing for sure. You know, I think that some of those measures may be the only tools that people have at their disposal. But I would still you know look through things like you know deferring some of those vendor payments, deferred uh, leases, deferred rent. Um, look at kind of those uh, you know de debt servicing. If a company has debt, I think financial institutions are opening open to, you know, deferring interest payment, just paying on principal. So I would look at some of those things uh, from a from a from a cash flow perspective. Um, you know, if the goal is to to make payroll because you need to pay people, uh, but but those are some of the measures that that I think could be taken in an immediate fashion, in addition to the programs that we talked about. 
Okay, great, thank you. We, uh, Jonathan just submitted a, a question here for you as well. Under the Ohio unemployment law, do all employees in a unit have to participate in a shared working arrangement in order to be valid? And if that's the arrangement, does that eliminate eligibility for any of the small business loans that are available through the CARES Act? Boy, I, uh, I, would, I would absolutely kick that one to our HR practice leader that's much more knowledgeable of the employment uh, law. If you wouldn't mind forward me, forwarding me that, uh, that exact question, sure. I will put that to, um, to the gentleman that manages our HR practice and I'll, I'll get a response back to that person. But I, yeah, that one's, that one's over my head in, in terms of employment law. And not a problem. Uh, appreciate that. We'd uh, much rather we looked into the resources than making up an answer. Yeah. So thank you, John. Appreciate, appreciate mm -hmm. that very much. Let's take us down the road of thinking through some specific scenarios. Mm -hmm. You've seen some already, and we've certainly talked through a couple as our questions rolled in. Do you mind, um, what are some scenarios that you're seeing, and you can share some responses or resources? Sure. Um, so we talked about a revenue degradation scenario. So one of the things that we will look at is kind of top line sales. If they decrease by 10%, what actions will we take? If they decrease by 20%, what actions will we take? Uh, will we will we recommend? So uh, so specific scenarios around revenue uh, revenue loss are real, and that's where we start to see things like obviously direct direct material, direct labor are some of the some of the kind of favorable variances uh, under that scenario. So. Uh, so just kind of playing that out through the um, uh, through the books is is an appropriate scenario. Something that we are absolutely seeing in the marketplace is uh, whether it's a response because there is a COVID nineteen outbreak or a significant risk within an organization. We are seeing um, sometimes two day shutdowns just to sanitize the facility. Uh, we are seeing some in some scenarios a two week kind of allow our workforce to uh, to to um, to, to self quarantine and uh, you know take care of things on the home front, so we are seeing those scenarios play out. And I won't go through all the kind of the details of of how that affects the um, cash flow, but you know we see things like supply costs go down, back to direct labor, direct material. Um, T and E obviously travel's been cut. That's kind of a, a favorable thing that we've seen. So I would say those couple different shutdown scenarios. Um, we did talk about key person risk. I think that's a really valuable scenario to play out. You know, look at the, you know, someone that, that may lead, lead operations or look at people that are essential employees that are, um, that are building things, that are manufacturing things. I think we have to look at what it would look like if we lost, you know, 20% due to, due to an outbreak or due to, um, you know, kind of a quarantining type process. So, uh, so I'd say that those are some of the scenarios that we're seeing very real, a lot from the revenue perspective, uh, a lot from the key person perspective, and then kind of different shutdown uh, scenarios. Okay. So let's let's go to the positive side for a moment. Assuming we yeah. all weather this storm, what should everyone be looking to do to prepare for the next challenge or oh. crisis? That we oh, I, 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 hope, I hope there isn't one, but there... You know there are there are silver linings to this. You know I talked about the one that that maybe hits me the the, the closest, which is kind of this sense of community and um, partnership and and all of us kind of being in this together. So uh, so I see that as being a real favorable outcome. It's an extremely difficult time, uh, but I think what we're seeing in the business community is that people are working together. Um, they're trying to solve these difficult problems. There's a lot of, you know, empathy because we are all in this together. So I think that the sense of, of, of community is something that's very real uh, that, that we're seeing more and more every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that that's a real, uh, hopefully that's something that we all carry forward as a lesson learned as a, a, and, and as a result of this. So, so that's one. We talked about technology and uh, in some ways this is pre-COVID-19. This was one of our messages that um, you know, for a healthy organization, when you get through this uh, and, and people recover and they will, um, it's, it's a good idea to invest in technology. It allows us to uh, work remotely a whole lot more and companies, I think, as a result will in some way change their, their operating model to, to take advantage of those things. So, uh, so I think leaning on technology to be more efficient, to have more uh, transferable business processes 
Um, I, I think that's really, really important. And I think once companies get healthy again, uh, it will be a good opportunity to, to reinvest in those business systems that can really uh, help you weather storms like this, hopefully nothing at, at, at this level again, but, um, but uh, they do provide a real benefit. Um, I, I think that, you know, there are through some of these uh, cost cutting measures and expense reduction measures, I think companies will, they'll kind of learn how to do more with less. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's, that's a good thing at the end of the day, I think we'll become more efficient and, and, and more effective as a result. So, um, so I'd say those are, those are a couple of the things. And the other one obviously is that um, having a business continuity plan even if it is, you know, not at the level of detail that we've been talking about here, but, but it does make sense, you know, it's like having a, a will, you know, it's, you don't always want to think about the, the, the negative uh, scenarios or the things that could really uh, negatively affect your organization, but uh, it is a worthwhile exercise to think through, you know, how would you function in a remote uh, environment? You know, what are your key operations? Who are your key individuals? Um, and, and have, you know, a plan in place for when something happens. You know, most of our business continuity plans historically were around the operations, you know, how do we shift things? What do we, what do we scale down to just to keep the lights on? Uh, this is obviously much more drastic than, than what, uh, you know, a traditional business continuity plan or pandemic plan would have, uh, or an inclement weather plan or loss of building plan. But, um, but I think that, you know, doing that planning is, uh, is going to be a, a valuable and worthwhile exercise down the road. Great, thank you. We have a couple final questions coming in and then we'll wrap up our time okay. together. One question is, have you seen insurance companies provide for business interruption claims for the pandemic? Insurance companies, um, hmm. I'd have to, uh, off the top of my head, no. So with the organizations that, that I've been working with, I have not seen that specifically. So. Uh, that's another one. If, if, if you want to grab that question, um, I'll pull some of the other members of our team. So I haven't seen it directly, but, uh, but that's not to, not to say that, that, you know, someone else on the team has potentially seen that. So um, I'd be happy to get back to that person with an answer. So the answer for me is no, but um, someone else may have. Wonderful. Wonderful. So as we close out today, and you've certainly covered a lot of great material, if, if people were to walk away with what to do right now, Mm -hmm. Not the future. Yes, we absolutely love thinking about the future. But right now, what are the one to two, three nuggets you'd share or leave people with to say, make sure you're doing these couple of things to really help you through this time? Yeah. So, you know, I would say number one is, um, is, is lead. And, you know, a leader during times like this uh, exhibits different behaviors than a leader through a growth period. So, so sure. be, be a leader um, and, and communicate effectively. So, I think this is about you know confidence that we will we will get through it. There are going to be difficult decisions that that need to be made, but I think now is the time to be a a confident leader that communicates really effectively. So I would say, uh, if the audience here is business leaders, um, you know, lead during a during a time of crisis and and do so with confidence, and um, you know, and kind of be in front of your of your people. Um, maintain that connectedness as much as possible. So I would say those are those are some leadership things that I would say you should be doing right now, and hopefully you have been for the last few weeks. Uh, so that's one. Uh, number two, I would say is just get really, really close to the health of your organization from a financial perspective. So get into the weeds from uh, from an expense perspective. Um, analyze different scenarios uh, and and play those out so you can maintain. Uh, you know, a favorable cash position. So I would say, take care of your people, be empathetic, be a leader, communicate effectively, but get into the weeds uh, in terms of your financials and, um, and, and make decisions based on fact and based on kind of a, a logic and thoughtful analysis. Those would be the two things that I would say. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, John, one of the questions that came through is, how do people reach you and how do they reach out? And we will certainly follow up with your sure. contact information, but if you don't mind real briefly, just share your uh, contact information with, with the audience. Sure. Yeah. So I can, um, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. So you can, you can find me on LinkedIn. If you just search Brixie and Meyer, search for my name. 
Um, Bricksteinmeyer.com is our uh, is our website, so you can um, you can you can connect to me through there, uh, as well as some of the other leaders within our organization. I talked about kind of the expertise that we have uh, on the SBA side with the CARES Act, uh, on the HR side. So you know the team is broader uh, than than just me that are supporting organizations through this time. So so you know you can check our website uh, Bricksteinmeyer.com. You can uh, reach me directly on LinkedIn. Um, and then if you kind of, if you wanted to follow up with my direct email address and, and phone number, I'm, I'm happy to talk to uh, anybody at more, at a more detailed and individual level. Wonderful. John, thank you so much. We know that this is such a busy time for so many of us and for you to take time during this crisis to help leaders navigate and weather this storm is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Yeah, and, and thank you. Uh, you know, it, um, it, it's important back to this connectedness and sense of community. You know, what the Chamber's doing down there is so valuable and, and we're using you as a resource uh, as well. So, um, so absolutely appreciate uh, everything that you guys are doing as well, Amy. Great, thank you. And, and John, absolutely, that's a great reminder for folks that may have tuned in a little bit late please lean on the chamber. We are here for our members in the community right now. Uh, if you're considering membership, uh, certainly tune in. We'd, we'd love to bring more members into the fold. We are currently have pivoted as a business and are offering helplines and resources and trying to connect people uh, as they try to figure this out. We're, we are truly in it together. So thank you, John. We do have uh, some upcoming offerings that may be of interest to you all as well. If you wanna continue this conversation, tomorrow morning at 9.30, we'll actually be doing more of a round table style. We will come in through a Zoom meeting so we can have a chance to interact with each other face-to-face -face and share best practices. We'll also hear from Doug Hall and Maggie Nichols as they talk about literally within 48 hours, how did they pivot a business uh, to go from being a distillery to providing hand sanitizer and they're also um, have new revenue streams. We know cash flow and revenue is top of mind right now. So please join us tomorrow, 9.30. We'd love to brainstorm with you. Additional conversations coming up later this week. We hope you will also turn in on Thursday and Friday. Uh, th Thursday, Thursday, we will be in conversation with the mayor. And Friday, a very interesting topic as we really dive into the virus and understand the vectors and the vaccines and what is that pathway. So please tune in with us later this week. Just a reminder that we are truly here as your chamber to be in service to all of you and it is a community effort. We are all in this together. Meanwhile, we hope you will stay safe, respect social distancing, even with those that you love. And as we sign off today, please go wash your hands please go wash your hands again. Thank you so much and take care.